Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about chemistry definition. We are going to see what does that mean when we say chemistry. You most likely enroll in a chemistry class and we are going to know what does that mean when we say chemistry. What should you expect to see in this class? As a chemist, this definition is the best definition I may share with you. The science of everyday experience. But before talking about this definition, I'm going to give you a variety of definitions you may find in some textbooks in chemistry, in introductory and general chemistry courses. So this definition that I like it, the science of everyday experience. Let's review what you do in your daily life is including tasting, smelling, watching, and many other actions. But chemistry can cover all of them. You can study all of these activity in chemistry. One thing is going to be used in all of these activities. And that one, we call that matter. So chemistry is a study of matter. What is the definition for matter? Matter is anything has mass and occupies a space. This is the definition you always see in the textbooks. So chemistry is definition of matter, sorry, study of matter. And the definition for matter, it means anything has mass and occupies volume. So let me highlight this one. Anything has mass and volume, we call that matter. And chemistry can study matters. Let me work on one terminology here. When we say anything has mass and occupies a space, occupies a space, I'm going to use this term, volume. So I'm going to change that one and say anything has mass and volume. So volume means the space is occupied by the matters. It doesn't matter what size of matters, too small or too large, so we are going to work on all of them in the chemistry. If you look at the textbooks, you may find for matter we have this definition. So that is why I may share with you, so for matter it doesn't matter you are in the advanced courses or in introductory level, Always we have this basic definition for math. After learning this definition, anything has mass and volume, we call it matter, we may have ultimately another part or definition for matter, another aspect of matter. Matter is composed of a lot of tiny little pieces we call atoms and molecules. So by this definition we wanted to share with you we need to imagine after considering matter as one part of our study in the chemistry we can work on some classification for matters but before working on the classification of matters we are going to learn what is the matter Import, why matter is important for us in the chemistry. Why do we need to study matters? Why chemistry is going to explain matters in our daily life? Because chemistry is going to focus on atoms and molecules. You may heard a lot about atoms and molecules. So atoms and molecules, they are tiny particles that can make the matters. If we are going to find relationship between atoms and molecules, we may say the smallest particles that we may have for the matter, for matter, uh, they are atoms. So the smallest particles, they are building block of matters. Atoms join to each other to make molecules. So it means after atoms as the smallest particles we may expect to have molecules 
molecules can be defined as combination of atoms. So atoms join each other, join together to make molecules. And molecules can be called matters as well. We may have different types of molecules join to each other to call matters. So if we are going to have a classification for this definition that I wrote here, matter composed of some tiny particles, molecules, and atoms. And we have this definition for matters, molecules, and atoms by this relationship. Atoms are building blocks of matters. They join together and make molecules, and molecules can have properties of matters. Before working on the some classification for matters, I may share with you matters composed of three different states, three different phases. So I may write that one here. Let me write it here. A state of matters. In chemistry, we have only these three phases or three states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas. Let me abbreviate it solid by lower, lo, lowercase s, liquid by lowercase l, and gases by lowercase g. So we have three states of matters. SLG, solid, liquid, gases. In physics, we may have some more types of matters. We may have plasma, we consider for that. But in chemistry, please consider that one, SLG. As you see here, in this slide, you will see some images regarding the solid, liquid, and gases, for all of them for water. So it looks, if we have a matter like water, it can be found, it can be found in three different states, solid, liquid, gases. And for water, this is the unique, exp unique properties, unique property because only for water we can find these three states of matters in our universe. So we don't need to have any changes. So the, our universe in the nature, it has these three types of matters. So it looks this one, it represents solid. This image is going to show liquid and this one, it represents gases. But we are going to know what does that mean, each one. Please look at this slide. For solid, we have this definition. So if I'm going to ask you to memorize one definition for solid, I may say solid has definite shape and definite volume. So let me draw a circle around the definition. A solid has definite shape and volume. So this definite is very important for us. So let me write it definite. It means fixed. So if we have shape and volume, we may say definite shape, definite volume. So let me denote the definite or fixed by the, this sign. Definite shape, definite volume. We call that solid. We call that solid. When we say definite shape at definite volume, we may have this property of solid as well. Particles can be placed close to each other to make a 3D arrangement to make a regular 3D arrangement. As you see here, we have a regular arrangement for particles here. Definite shape and definite volume for what? In this example, solid. So please look here. Liquid, we may say definite volume, but not a definite shape. So let me circle around the definitions that we have here. Definite, not definite. So, not definite. So I may write volume, shape. 
definite volume, not a definite shape. So let me denote that one by this one, not definite shape. So for liquid, we have this definition. We have definite volume, but not definite shape, not fixed shape. We don't have fixed shape for liquid because they are going to take the shape of their container. As you see here, they don't place close to each other. They don't have a regular 3D arrangement. So we may use this term. So we may say random arrangement, as we see here in this image. For liquid, definite shape, not defini definite volume, not definite shape, and we have a random arrangement. And finally, for gases, we are going to have volume and shape, but it says indefinite volume and not fixed shape. So I'm going to write it here. Volume, shape. Indefinite means not definite. Not fixed means not definite. So both are going to be like this. No definite shape and volume for gases. So it looks they are placed far apart of each other and also we may see like this image they move randomly so right now i think that you have better better understanding regarding this slide we already have here so i'm going to write that one for solid we may write that one let me write it here solid we have definite shape and definite volume regular arrangement for liquid we have definite volume not a definite shape we have a random arrangement and for gases we have not definite shape not definite volume they absolutely they don't have a regular arrangement and also they are move randomly and they place far apart of each other hope this video helps you to have this understanding regarding solid liquid gases of matters thank you for watching this video